and welcome to coverage of Grand Prix Minneapolis. Maria Bartholdi in the booth alongside Jacob Van Lunen. We have Brad Nelson versus Tamahiro Saito. Those names should be flip-flopped, by the way. Brad Nelson on the right side of your screen, Saito on the left side of your screen. Ooh, so Tamahiro Saito is playing blue-red control. Oh, okay. That makes sense. <laughs> and Brad, we saw him earlier. Again, he is playing uh, green-black constrictor. Um, a version of the deck that's playing Oath of Nyssa and four copies of Nyssa. So really uh, a much lower to the ground version of the deck than we've seen uh, more recently. It's uh, definitely hedging to beat the red strategies and I'm sure he's happy about that. One thing that Brad is not happy about is having a draw here. He is actually not 5-1. and one. Brad is 5-0-1. Oh and, mm. um, and having this draw means he's going to be in a situation where he's playing against um, slower, more controlling decks, and his deck is poised to be beating things that are... Uh, fast. Fast. Saito there with a harnessed lightning to take out the walking ballista from Nelson. And he just has to pass the turn back. No green mana, just a pair of swamps in play for Brad. And if he's keeping a hand with uh, no green mana, then it likely means he had a decent amount of removal, which bodes even worse for him, because he's playing against this blue control deck that... You know, the only target they even have for the removal spells in game one is Torrential Gear Hulk. All right, so Saito doing exactly what you want to do on turn four with Draw this blue red control deck. Play Glimmer Draw of Genius. Brad is able to stick that snake, though. Yeah, so. At they, least for now. With Winding Constrictor in play, Brad's deck does disgusting things. Uh, <laughs> the thing is that, you know, it, Tomahara has so many answers that it's unlikely he's going to be able to get any advantage off that snake right now. Uh, what Brad really wants to be doing here is uh, hopefully for him resolving a Nyssa. Uh, I think that's one of his better routes to victory. The blue Art control deck has a lot of trouble beating resolved planeswalkers. Why is that? Uh, well, the deck's very good at preventing things from getting on the table or dealing with creatures once they are on the table. But uh, planeswalkers uh, are a particular type of permanent that they're particularly weak against. And they can't really play any cards to deal with them in their main deck. So you find yourself in a situation where you know you have to line up your answers to the questions you think you're going to be asked. And if you're not, if you don't expect to be asked that particular question in game one very often, you're not going to play cards to uh, interact with it. Oath of Nyssa is able to find Brad a second green source here. Brad, of course, Platinum Pro, winner of GP Omaha recently. He's won a couple of Grand Prix this season. Yeah, he has. He is really good at magic. I think <laughs> a lot of people would agree that he has been the best constructed magic player for close to, I want to say, uh, probably about five years now. Uh, that's a hard title to hold on to. His Sylvan Advocate here is going to get Essence scattered by Saito. And you're so right. You know, I talked to Brad and I said to him, um, how are you so good at Constructed? And he said, it's all about the sideboard. It is all about the sideboard. Met Brad a very long time ago at uh, Nationals in 2007. Oh, wow. It was his first major tournament. And we became buddies. Yeah, Started such a nice guy. Started talking a lot guy. on Magic Online and whatnot. And came to my wedding. One of the... One of my favorite people in the entire world, Brad Nelson. <laughs> I was like, Brad, what are you playing here this weekend? And he's like, well, it's the exact same list you might know from a few months ago with like one or two tiny tweaks. <laughs> yeah, his main deck is like 58 cards, the same as the Black Green Constructor that won a Grand Prix. Yeah. Uh, you know, before Hour of Devastation even came out. All right, here we go. Another Winding Constrictor for Brad. Saito weighing his decisions here. You always have to ask permission when you're playing against Blu-ray Control. <laughs> Sylvan Advocate, the follow-up. And you mentioned this card being a pretty nice card right now in the current meta. Yeah, it's great right now. Um, it plays offense and defense, which makes it so good against the red decks. Um, it's just a powerful card in its own. Even when you're playing against something like Blue Air Control in the later stages of the game, it, it gets out of range of a lot of their removal. If you're able to kill their Torrential Gear Hulks, you can put yourself in a decent situation. 
And only four lands in play, by the way, for Brad, and about a million in play for Saito there. Seven. And uh, hitting land drops is really good when you're the blue red control deck. He doesn't have any, like, a pull or anything like that to make it especially powerful. But just the fact that these uh, Wandering Fumarals now have the ability to trade with Brad's permanence is pretty good for him. Brad's going to get into the red zone with Winding Constrictor, kind of force Saito to potentially do something here. Sure enough, there's a Fumarole. One thing about this female play is that uh, you know Brad doesn't have any other good targets for his removal spells at a Saito's deck, so we may see him. You know, if he has a Fatal Push, he'll assuredly use it, and uh, if he has a uh, Grasp of Darkness, unless he's trying to save a pair of Grasp of Darkness in his hand to deal with something like a Torrential Gear Hulk, he'll likely use that also. Yeah, I believe I saw a Grasp of Darkness in his hand. And is this something that you're considering when you're playing against Red Blue, how to bait out those fun fumaroles so that you can basically not have dead cards in your hand? Um, to a certain extent, but the problem is, is once you get to the stage of the game where they're activating it, it's usually because they have n either have no choice in whether or not they're going to activate it, or they're just crushing you so bad that they're activating it. Sure. And there we see Grasp of Darkness taking down that wandering fumeral. Another Sylvan Advocate hits the table for Brad after the snake gets in for a couple of points of damage. Ooh, and there's a Gear Hulk in Saito's hand. And how, just exactly how important is it to be able to have the Gear Hulk right now? Uh, it, it, you can't even describe how good the Gear Hulk <laughs> is on this board. It's insane. Uh, he's he's going to get to kill one of Brad's permanents. He might just get to kill both of Brad's permanents while also adding a 5-6 to his side of the table. It is disgusting how good this card is going to be right now. I mean, the other thing is that because of the way Saito's played for the last few turns, Brad has no reason to believe that there's a Torrential Gear Hulk waiting for him. Right. Unless Saito just drew one. So if he were able to play around that right now, he would be the greatest Magic player who ever lived in all time. <laughs> <laughs> Rishkar Pima Renegade hitting the table for Brad. It's kind of a decision now. I mean, do you play the Gear Hulk just to potentially counter this risk car? I mean, with the Constrictor on the table, it, you may just want to, you know, Gear Hulk and get the Constrictor off the table before risk car comes out, like once it chooses its targets. But he may just want to, you know, now that Brad's tapped the majority of his mana, he may just want to Gear Hulk into that Glimmer of Genius and then block something. Glimmer is pretty tempting. And you can see this is not a straightforward, easy decision for Saito. Brad here deciding what to put counters on. There's a look at Rishkar Pima Renegade, 2-2 two, two for 3. Put plus Put a plus one, plus one counter on each of up to two target creatures when it enters the battlefield. And can help ramp you as well. Yeah, so if Brad just attacks here with both of his guys, Saito's got to feel great about himself. But, oh man. All right, here they come. I mean, this is definitely prompting a Gear Hulk because Saito cannot let that happen. So Saito's either going to be... Gear hulking into harness lightning to get the constrictor off the table, or he's just going to be gear hulking into that sensor to counter the Nissa. Both lines really great here. I mean, Brad's just doing disgusting things if this resolves. Think about it. And Nissa, when it adds plus one, plus one counters, it's adding double them now. So you're activating your planeswalker to make all of your guys permanently get plus two, plus two. Um, this is just where you see all the different cogs in the deck working together. Um, also, you'll notice that Brad chose to tap his Sylvan Advocate for mana here before his attack step, so he won't get to attack with it, even though it's vigilant. So Brad does smell something on the other side of the table. Wow, and you just called it. <laughs> yeah, so there we go, guys. Greatest player ever in the history <laughs> of the game. 
How is it even possible to play that well? There she is, Nissa, voice of Zendikar. I initially did uh, assume it was an attack, but it was a tap for mana. Just a much you know, safer play. Magma Spray will deal with Rishkar there. Oh, yeah. So Saito here can just Gear Hulk, uh, get the Constructor off the table, and then all he has left on the other side of the table is a 5 6 Sylvan Advocate because he can swing and kill the Nissan on his next turn. And that's how you deal with Planeswalkers when you're a red blue control. Wow. You attack them with Gear Hulks. And you said, too, that planes uh, Resolve Planeswalker is pretty hard for blue red control to beat. Yeah. I mean, at this stage of the game, it's a little different because all Brad's creatures were tapped and Saito had the gear hulk in hand but in the earlier stages of the game if Brad were able to get that down early he could conceivably have made like chump lockers in the form of plants and whatnot and you know found a way to protect that Nissa for a long-term game. Wandering Fumarole will get activated here from Saito. Swings in at Nissa. Nissa down. Saito's version of the deck only plays one hour of devastation. Hmm. Speaking of Gear Hulks, Brad's got one of his own. That Sylvan Advocate, yeah. <laughs> pretty big right now. That is a, <laughs> and Vigilant. Supersized Advocate here. Brad putting those plus one, plus one counters uh, down in such a way that they match up well against that Torrential Gear Hulk, making his Vergerous Gear Hulk have exactly six power and six toughness, so it's a bad block, and uh, getting a Sylvan Advocate much larger. Here we see another Oath of Nyssa from Brad. Taking a look there, I see a Winding Constrictor, I see a Sylvan Advocate. I think the other card, I don't know what it is. I can't see. <laughs> <laughs> Thought I knew and then I was wrong. He's going to take the advocate here. Why do you think you make that decision? Um, well, I don't know what the other cards were, but I, I'm assuming that he just wants to... Uh, and continue to apply pressure. It looks like Saito is like really low on resources at this point. One card in hand, yeah. And uh, oh, this this works out really well for Brad here. If he does have a fatal push, he can uh, use Ink at the Wandering Fumarole off the table and then uh, gobble up the Gear Hulk in the process. Sure enough, fatal push takes down the Fumarole. Gear Hulk just has to jump in front of that advocate. And here's another one. Saito forced to just scoop them up. Game one of this match goes to Brad Nelson playing Black Green Constrictor. And Brad's got to feel good about that. This is not a matchup that no. his deck wants to see. Um, although, I actually don't know. I, because this version of Black Green Constrictor, the low to the ground Nissa version, something with Oath of Nissa, is not something I've seen recently. So I don't really know how it matches up against the modern Blue Red Control decks. Hour of Devastation seems disgusting against Brad. But uh, between his main deck and sideboard, Saito only has one copy of Hour of Devastation. Also, I'd like to go back and talk a little bit about him not attacking with that Advocate on the Torrential Gear Hulk turn. Sure. Because if Saito, the turn before, had had a Gear Hulk, there's no way that he would not have played it. So he had to have correctly assessed that the top card of Saito's library that he just drew was Torrential Gear Hulk and use the, the different clues and how Saito had played the game and how Saito was holding himself to deduce that information. And being able to do that against one of the most successful Grand Prix players of all time, I guess Saito has, how many Grand Prix top eights? Do we know off the top of our head? Not off the top of my head. I'll find out that information for you guys in a little bit, but it's, it's some number that uh, it's greater than most of your ages. <laughs> um, Speak for yourself, I'm 82. Yeah. It might be like less than the number of years my dog has, but. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, it's just incredible that one could figure that out and make their play accordingly. 
and Brad did that. And if he didn't do that, he would have lost the game. So, everybody, Brad Nelson. Let's take a look at their deck lists here in front of us. And it's been you know, noted that blue-red is a pretty favored against a traditional black-green constrictor list going in. But as you mentioned, Brad's got a low-to-the-ground Nissa version. So what um, kind of sideboard cards can we expect either Saito or Nelson to bring in to kind of help swing the match more in their favor? So something Saito is really going to want is Glorybringer. Um, Glorybringer is great against Brad's deck. Uh, you know, it breaks up the combo while also applying pressure. Um, another card that could be really good out of Saito's deck is um, Thing in the Ice, mm. depending on how Brad sideboards. Uh, he only has two copies in his board, but the thing about Thing in the Ice is that you know, you're kind of taking this gamble that your opponent's going to take their removal out of their deck. And if they do, you get this absurdly powerful card that they can't really interact with well. Um, now, the problem is for your opponent is what they're thinking of in their head is that, <clears throat> especially if they know that Saito is probably only playing something like two Thing in the Ice, do they want to keep removal in just to deal with Thing in the Ice? Uh, if there are only two copies, what if your opponent doesn't draw it? Then you're drawing dead cards. So it puts your opponent in this really precarious situation. It's just a really powerful sideboard card. Uh, in Saito's main deck, he has four Magma Spray, which are almost assuredly getting taken out of his deck. All right, let's take a live look in on our match here at our B table. Matt Severa versus Fanchun Yang. Blue-black reanimator? Question mark? <laughs> what on earth is this? Severa, it's, uh, of course, Liliana. Marty a Liliana. Right? Yeah. Death's Majesty. That's such a great card name. Oh, yeah. Matt Severa, of course, <laughs> Mardu Vehicles fan. Why wouldn't you be? I mean, wins GPs with it. <laughs> it's such a good deck. I mean, it's, it's the one overpowered deck that hasn't been touched over the last how many, you know, months. Here we have an Oath of Jace from Yang. And Yang is uh, trying to fill his graveyard up with disgustingly powerful creatures. Oh, yeah, Razaketh's in there right now. <gasps> <laughs> That's awesome. So here's a look at Oath of Jace, if you've forgotten about him. <laughs> when he enters the battlefield, draw three cards and discard two. At the beginning of upkeep, scry X, where X is the number of planeswalkers you control. So Yang, with just a grip full of cards here, and being able to use his graveyard as a resource as well. And he's doing a good job of uh, controlling this game right now, too. Yeah, Scrap Heap Scrounger in the bin for Severa, along with a little Thraben. Investigator Ooh. Ishkana. The Graph Widow herself. The Graph Widow appears. Delirium check, sure enough. Come along with your spider babies. Pass the turn back. Back comes the Scrounger. I think the first match is going, but uh, do you guys want to stay here for a minute and see this blue-black reanimator deck reanimate something sweet? I kind of do. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I kind of want to see Razaketh the foul-blooded. That's kind of a bad insult, foul-blooded. I mean, in the story, Razaketh like, slits his arm open and drains his blood into the river in Amonkhet. That's, like, really metal. <laughs> It's like so excessively metal. metal. <laughs> <laughs> okay, people want to stay on this. I think this is pretty cool. Let's just check it out and see how this deck operates. And there you called it Liliana, Death's Majesty, able to bring things back from the dead. And what will she be bringing back? Why, none other than Razaketh himself. I love it. Now let's see how, uh, how fast Razaketh can end a game. There's a look at Liliana. Her minus three ability brings back cards from the graveyard. Razaketh, it's only a flying trample 8-8. Eight, eight. That gives you, like, unlimited demonic tutors. Yeah, pay two life, sacrifice another creature, search your library for a card, and that put, that, put that card in your hand. No big deal. And he can just sacrifice spider tokens to do that? Yep. Go. <laughs> Matt Sever, I mean, like, his poor little Mardu Vehicles deck is not built to deal with this. 
No, it is not. Hello. Unlicensed oh, integration. Unlicen yep, unlicensed disintegration. We'll take care of Razaketh there. And Liliana. Yeah. All right, well, that cleared things up a little bit. Unlicensed disintegration. Pretty good card. Was a good card, still a good card, turns out. I don't know how you unlicensedly disintegrate a demon, but well done. I'm surprised uh, Fan Chen didn't uh, choose to sacrifice at least one of those spiders to try to find a, another uh, card to reanimate with. I guess he already had one. Yeah, it looks like he already had one. Razaketh is back. One spider gonna get in here. You know what 16 is? What? Divisible by eight. Eight. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's see what uh, Severus can put together here. He's got a Chandra and a Heart of Curin. Man, this blue-black deck is sick. Yeah, this deck is awesome. I think Ishkanai Graph Widow is uh, one of the most overlooked cards right now in Standard. I mean, it has you know had times where it has been kind of format very defining. Dom very dominant. Yeah, and uh, right now, not so much. It's, it's funny that a format can be as aggressive as it is and Ishkanai not be a major player. All right, here comes the demon and Ishkanai. And her spawn. Yeah, the paperwork to become a licensed demon disintegrator is ridiculous. <laughs> so many hoops to jump through. All right, tapping a, just a bunch of mana here. All of the Noxious mana. Gear Hulk I see at the front of Yang's hand. Is that even what's going to happen? I don't, I'm not sure. Oh, no. I think he just uh, activated Ishkana, I believe. Oh, okay. For lethal damage. Right? Because Matt was at 14, so he attacked with everything and said, all right, are you going to block? And then if... Oh. Did, uh... did he make a misstep there? Because I think that might have been one shy of uh, lethal there. Yeah, we see a crew on the heart of Curin. Oh, that's interesting there. Matt drops to three. Okay. Yeah, so here, there's a little bit of an opening here. Matt could win the game. I think uh, Fan Chen thought that he had won the game there. Oh, really? Um, otherwise, I can't imagine you'd be using your mana in that spot to right. activate Ishkana unless you thought the game was over. Well, Matt is just going to uh, extend the hand there, take a look at the top card. Razaketh. Razaketh, the foul-blooded doing what Razaketh does. Getting it done for Fan Chen Yang. Blue Black Reanimator. That was sweet. That is really sweet. I hope he continues to do well so we can Check on that deck again, yeah. Throughout the remainder of the tournament. All right, we're going to take a look back here at our main match. Players have tied it up here, Saito and Nelson, one game apiece. Have you seen the um, Gitrog Monster deck in Standard? I have not. Oh, yeah. Another really cool deck. Oh, man. I'm a big fan of Gitrog Monster. How can you not be? That guy is adorable and does all of the stuff that everyone loves to do. He does stuff with graveyards, does stuff with lands. Oh, man. Now I'm just thinking about decks I could build with Gitrog Monster. <laughs> I definitely played against one the other day. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Jeez. I, I played a lot of Magic Online this week, and I did not have the pleasure of playing with or against Gitrog Monster. It had the card that at the top of your, uh, at your upkeep, you can put two cards into your graveyard. And anytime the first land is put into your graveyard, you can get, you get an insect token. Um, it was just really neat. 
So it like was going super deep. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> it was. It was a legitimate Git Rock Monster deck. It wasn't like a deck oh, no, where no, Git no. Rock Monster fit well. It was like it I was. am a <laughs> Git Rock Monster deck. This is what I do. Yeah. I like that. I feel like that's something that uh, we don't see enough of anymore. I feel like Magic decks used to be, you know, like focused, well-oiled Flavorful. machines that like did what they did. Instead of just like, oh, here's a bunch of good cards. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, that is, often, often powerful cards seem to go together. <laughs> <laughs> I, too, am a fan of a deck that just feels very synergistic. And I don't know, like it's built as a, it takes teamwork from every card in the deck. Yeah, but they all fit together so nicely. They do something beautiful. <laughs> at the end of this weekend, I hope to have that feeling in my heart for a deck that I'm going to play at Denver in a couple weeks. This standard format's really cool. I'm sure you can find something awesome to play with. Um, what decks have you been thinking about, Maria? Well, we talked about it a little earlier today, and I was really trying to make some kind of white deck, white-based deck work either around, I tried to make it work around uh, Pride Sovereign, I tried to make it work around Crested Sunmare. Have you tried just smashing reality with white cards? There is a white, re- like Eldrazi deck with Eldrazi Displacer in it. Yeah, I, I think that could be good. All right, chat, put yeah. your heads together. I want you to help me decide yeah, what to play. Some white Eldrazi deck. <laughs> I just, I'm not the kind of person who wants to be messing around with Displacer, though. What was it dangerous? Like, does it? Do, I'm no, confused. I want to be attacking. It's like somebody being like, oh, man, I don't want to do that. I might get addicted." <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh yeah, this is Eldrazi just displacer. Don't want to be messing around with Eldrazi oh, man. displacer. You know, he just <laughs> dabble your toe in a little bit of Eldrazi displacer, and soon, you know, you're <laughs> soon you're trying to like blink Mangar of Karandor in modern tournaments. <laughs> Oh, man, I remember when they were a productive member of society. Look how far they've fallen. <laughs> yeah, slippery slope. <laughs> slippery slope, <laughs> displacer. <laughs> uh, yeah, white weenie is what I want to do, but it's just not good right now. It's just not good. There's so much removal, so much removal. And when you play your glory-bound initiate and you're like, I'm doing it. When you play your lone rider, I'm doing it. But you're not doing it. <laughs> Because you're not doing just it. Just kill it so easily <laughs> <laughs> for less mana than you c- used to cast it in the first place. It's a tough life, JBL. Tough life. And you know, the way I like looking at the White Weenie decks is I don't ever feel like I'm compelled to play with those types of strategies. Because Craig West goes out there doing God's good work. You know, like I don't need to be sacrificing yes. myself on that pedestal. Look, Craig he's Wesco <laughs> is a shining beacon of light for me because he's doing exactly what I want to do in Magic. I went up and like watched He's going to put a one man equipment on some Savannah Lion thing, and <laughs> yes. that's good for society, but that's not good for me, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I, I went up and was watching about the Pro Tour because, you know, I knew that 24 is a 25% of the field or something like that was playing Ramonet Red. And I was like, okay, I know Craig's my man. I'm going to go find him, see what he's playing, get the sick tech. He went, ended up going 5-5 five and five in standard, uh, which isn't so hot. But he, he did like his deck and has since tweaked it. And I was just watching. It was a white-black deck. And uh, just like by the narrowest of margins getting defeated. Um, but it's nice to know that I can always go up and watch him and kind of know what I'm going to get. <laughs> All right, it looks like our... Oh, nope. Spoke too soon. Saito taking another mulligan here. Doing the shuffle I wish I could do. So cool. Some sweet shuffle action here. Uh, but maybe I'll play this Sultai Reanimator. <laughs> Maria. <laughs> what? Are we trying to win? <laughs> I mean, Sultai Reanimator could be good. I, I want to make sure it's good before you before you start making these these wild presumptions. Okay, okay, okay. I'll I'll. We, uh, I'm, I'm not making any decisions yet. I want Maria to be hoisting up a trophy <laughs> on the weekend. <laughs> Do you know what uh, this? <laughs> Uh, it, what was it? It was Denver. GP Denver 
a bunch of months ago, and I was doing life totals in the feature match area, and the top eight went to take their picture, and I photobombed it, and like took a selfie of them, and I was like, look, I made the top eight, and I was just kidding, because I thought it was pretty obvious that I was like photobombing this, and so many people liked it, and they're like, oh my gosh, we're so excited for you, <laughs> that I had to delete it, <laughs> oh. and break everybody's heart, no, 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 I did not actually <laughs> top eight this standard GP. Brad Nelson is ready to go. <laughs> Saito has kept. Brad starts things off with a swamp. Hey Brad, happy to be on the play here. Hopefully, gonna that'll give him an opportunity to get something in underneath the counter magic. But if he doesn't have a two drop, that's uh, you know, not really where he wants to be. So oath, not a two drop really. Yeah, once Saito has two lands available, that's when Brad's got to start to feel the sweat because there are a number of ways that he can, Saito is able to deal with threats from Brad off of just two mana. Yeah, one thing that's, that is nice for Brad here is that if he plays a Constrictor, once he has three lands in play, then Tamaharo is going to need very specifically Essence Scatter uh, in order to counter that because Brad will have had the mana to uh, dodge a sensor. And we know he kept a Winding Constrictor off of that Oath of Nyssa. And Sensor, uh, a hard card to play around in a lot of ways because even if you do play around it, your opponent ends up just cycling it. So yeah. you don't really get to punish them the same way you get to punish uh, those types of effects traditionally. It was interesting when um, Sensor was initially spoiled, everybody was saying, oh, this card is really strong, you know? I, I still think it's one of the better cards in Standard. I'm surprised it has not been uh, a bigger player in some of the most successful decks. Winding Constrictor is the play for Brad. I do think it makes decks like this Blue-Red Control deck playable where they might not have been otherwise, though. Just do you think just that inclusion? Yeah. Yeah, I think I think if sensor wasn't part of the format, there would be no blue red control. Wow. Sometimes as little as one card making the difference. Yeah, like you could describe the deck as something, but then if you censor that, then it becomes a reasonable deck. <laughs> Winding Constrictor has lived, at least so far, here for Brad. He's going to get in for two. I noticed a never to return in Brad's hand, I believe. Just good, because he, he's probably, that's a nice type of interactive spell to bring in against this deck, because uh, Saito could very easily have, uh, you know, Planeswalkers in his deck also. So, you know, you don't want to keep in removal that is potentially dead uh, when your opponent, you know, the only card they might have that does anything that you can interact with is Thing in the Ice, besides, of course, the Wandering Fumerals. Um, but if you bring in a card like uh, Never to Return, then if they have Planeswalkers or Thing in the Ice, it deals with either one. Saito plays his fourth land, Ether Hub, able to gain an energy. And we've been saying it all day, that's the critical turn there, allowing uh, Saito to cast Glimmer of Genius, end of turn, or something like Hieroglyphic Illumination. Now, Brad's in an interesting spot here because he knows if, if he doesn't apply additional pressure to the board that Saito's just going to start pulling ahead with something like Glimmer of Genius. But in the same right, he has not given Saito an opportunity to use a card like Sensor yet at all. Um, so just running something like Verger's Gear Hulk out there is horribly dangerous. Transgress the Mind is going to be the play for Brad here. And this is incredible for Brad, because not only is he going to uh, get his pick of the litter, but he will also uh, then know exactly what he needs to be playing around. 
And something I like here from Saito is that Brad plays around that sensor with the winding constrictor, and Saito doesn't cycle it. Saito instead says, OK, well, you played around this sensor. Now I am going to be able to keep the sensor, and you presumably will not play around it in coming turns because I didn't cycle it. So you think that I don't have it. Hieroglyphic illumination for Saito after, indeed, Nelson did choose the Glimmer of Genius. Ooh, very surprised to see Magma Spray still in Tamahara Saito's deck here in a post-border game. Um, perhaps thinking that Brad might be playing something like Grimflayer in his deck? Mm. A second Winding Constrictor here. It's going to get disallowed. That's one of the few cards that Brad did not know about. Saito's hand. Brad isn't playing any Grim Flayer, is that right? That is correct, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, I, I talked to Brad a little bit earlier today, and he was really underimpressed with Grim Flayer um, in his testing this week. He was very unsure of what he should play this weekend. He ended up going with this. He and some friends have had some success on Magic Online with this deck over the last week. They're hoping to uh, translate that to success here on a bigger stage. Transgress the mind once again for Brad Nelson. Saito lays out his cards, <laughs> assumes Nelson will be taking that disallow. And so uh, negate harness lightning sensor and magma spray. How do you feel if you're Brad and you're looking at that hand right now? I feel pretty happy, all things considered. I feel like um, in that situation, you know, you can kind of start pressing an advantage a little bit. Like, and I know he's only attacking for two a turn, but if he draws a land on the next turn, um, he could just play, you know, something like a Verger's Gear Hulk, especially now. Um, you know, Saito doesn't have any library manipulation left. So all Brad really has to do is draw land here, and then you know, he, he can start doing whatever he wants to do in the entire world. <laughs> Winding Constrictor, once again for Nelson, his third of the game. One of the namesake card of his deck makes a lot of the other cards much more powerful. Um, cards that are already good, like Rishkar, Pima Renegade, or uh, Nissa, or Virtuous Gear Hulk, become a lot better when they're combined with Winding Constrictor. An interesting card that some people have been bringing in out of the sideboard in white face decks, Solemnity. Against a black-green counters-based strategy. Yeah, that does a lot to uh, weaken cards like Winding Instructor. Again, I think Solemnity is the type of card you really want to be playing one of, if any. Sure. Also, Saito there hamming it up a little bit on whether or not he's going to do something when Brad casts the Constrictor. Brad's already seen his hand and knows there's nothing he can do. <laughs> <laughs> it's such a patient game you have to play against these control decks. In comes Constrictor. So I guess Saito deciding whether or not he wants to use Wandering Fumeral. Decides against it. Arthur Peck and Justin Huffke. Arthur Peck and Justin Huffke. Please report to the main event stage. Arthur Peck. Saito down to 10. You know, I like this a lot from Saito, though. The moment Brad hits that sixth land, the land that makes it so that. Uh, Makes that sensor is essentially just dead. Saito just cycles the sensor. So I was like, I'm, I was holding on to this until it didn't stop Verger's Gear Hulk, and now there's no reason. There's to no keep reason. It so here, Brad absolutely, absolutely has to go for it. I think. Um, it's probably very frustrated he didn't draw that land on the previous turn. 
There it is, a virtuous gear hulk. So Saito's going to go fishing for Essence Scatter. If he doesn't find one, <laughs> it's, he's in a rough spot. I think one of those two cards was a disallow. There's a look at Virtuous Gear Hulk, quite formidable when it has a snake friend. Oh, did he draw it? He drew a braid. All right, so he'll abrade the winded constrictor here. Yeah, and uh, Brad gets an 8-8. Eight eight. That's tough for Saito to deal with. I mean, does he have any way? Yeah, he could har harness. He already has lightning. three energy, so he could harness lightning plus magma spray which I believe he has right now. So he actually does have a way to deal with this right now. Yeah, so up to now, four energy. But that, that will be you know all of his removal spells out of his hand. He'll just be left with a pile on the gates, essentially, and some fumaroles. Um, not that's the worst because it seems like Brad's resources have kind of dwindled here also. So there you see a braid on your screen. Certainly a card that has made a big splash in standard. Now that what uh, on a braid the flavor text that's a metaphor. The desert itself is not actually a beast. Wow. Yeah. Thank you. No problem. <laughs> <laughs> Not a simile. We didn't use like or as. No, no, no. Mm -hmm. It's poetic. And here I think we're about to see the play you described, JVL. Magma Spray followed up by Harness Lightning from Saito to take down that 8-8 Gear Hulk. Uh, Gear Hulk's actually exiled, yeah. Does Brad have a follow-up play? He does not. No, just passes the turn back. Negate, negate, in hand for Saito. And now Brad, uh, you know, hissing Quagmire, not really going to do much, just betray with some of these wandering fumaroles. Hissing Q, as we call it in my part of the neck of the woods. And he's probably feeling really frustrated. He drew his cards in a really awkward order. Had he drawn that six land as an untap land, he would have very easily won the game. Instead, he drew it as a tap land and then started top decking a bunch of lands. Um, he can force to tap a lot of mana here, but that's essentially all this is going to do. Yeah, his and Quagmire activation here from Nelson, followed up by a wandering fumeral. Grasp of Darkness. Negated, block, down goes the quagmire and the fumeral. Transgress the mind, check out this negate, go. <laughs> yeah. Well, is that a glimmer? Ooh, that would be certainly wow. a good card to have I right think that's, now. Uh, you know, top two draws in, that he could have out of his deck. One land, I noticed, in that pile of two for Saito. Both going to the bottom. And the energy you get from the Glimmers may not seem like it's overly relevant here, but if it weren't for that energy, Saito would not have been able to take out that Verger's Gear Hulk earlier. That's a, an important note. Catacomb Sifter is the play here for Brad Nelson, a card we haven't seen hide nor hair of in quite a long time. And Catacomb Sifts are so good against the red decks. Uh, we talked about it earlier. It, it reminds us a lot of P and Similar personality. Both yeah, two threes similar that bring hairdos. 
a one one along with them. Yeah. <laughs> They run in the same circles. Glimmer to glimmer. And that's... Value town. That's when the red-blue deck just starts taking over the game. Once you start chaining Glimmer of Geniuses, you know, you're eventually going to find something like a Torrential Gear Hulk. And here, Brad hoping to, to catch Saito without an answer. And uh, did he do it? No, he did not. Torrential Gear Hulk... Boom! Yeah, and that's going to find Disallow. Now, at this stage of the game, Saito really, it's just elementary. He starts attacking with his Gear Hulk, uh, playing defense where he can. He's uh, sculpted his hand to the point with those glimmers that he has what he needs. A braid takes down the sifter. In comes the gear hulk. And here's when you talked about turning the corner. You can see Saito turning it full speed ahead right now. And that's one thing that's really cool about these control decks these days also is that, you know, in the olden days, a control deck would have to win by doing something like really grindy and boring and it would take forever. Nowadays, when a control deck wins, it's attacking you with five sixes. Like once they've clenched the game, it doesn't take that long for them to actually win. It's not quite as brutal as it has been at various other stages. Where controlled dice is constantly going to time? Yes. <laughs> Tell me of the olden days, JVM. <laughs> it was a beautiful time. <laughs> <laughs> of doing nothing and loving it. All right, an update on that reanimator deck. Won the match, 2-0. Very nice. Sultai Reanimator. There's actually uh, a Sultai Reanimator deck that went undefeated in, in one of the Magic Leagues from this week, if you look those up online. Excellent. So uh, if you want to find a deck that might be similar to that, where you have an actual list, you can go there and find that on dailymtg.com. We see Brad trying to fire off a Never on the Torrential Gear Hulk. Will get negated. Hieroglyphic Illumination finds a pair of lands there for Saito. Magma Spray in hand. And Saito's been uh, drawing a lot of card draw here. The thing about drawing card draw is that it draws you into more card draw. <laughs> it's like a self-fulfilling prophecy. Chain, chain, chain. Yeah, once you can chain together card draw effects, you just are really doing it. <laughs> Brad Nelson, all he could draw there was a swamp. Not what yeah. he wanted to see at all. Probably about uh, the worst thing he could have possibly drawn. Here, Nelson's taking, taking a look through the graveyard the there. Active player, please finish your turn and then begin the final turn extension. That is time in the round. Return provides Nelson with that 2 2 zombie. Another uh, marsh here. Glorybringer smash. <laughs> Taking down that catacomb sifter with the exert trigger. And you mentioned that Glorybringer was certainly a card Saito wanted to see in this matchup. Dispossess here for Nelson. You know, that's a great card in this matchup. Oh, it's I think that's so a, good. Brad really was hoping to draw that in an earlier stage of the game so that he could uh, take all the gear hulks out of Saito's deck. And, I mean, if Brad's able to deal with what's on the table now, it, it doesn't look good for him, but if he's able to deal with this Glorybringer and this Torrential Gear Hulk, then the only card remaining in Saito's deck that Saito can win with, besides Wandering Fumaroles, is a single copy of Glorybringer. Yeah, Disc was uh, kind of a little too late here for Nelson, but he's going to still fire it off, get the rest of the Gear Hulks out of the deck. Just going to extend the hen there. A glory bringer, very strong card. Glory bringer taking down the game for Saito, winning the match two games, 2-1. Two, All right, we'll have more Grand Prix Minneapolis after these messages.
the coverage of 